Now, to configure the router to use the cache, I've shown an example using Cisco IOS. We point the router to the local RPKI cache. We make the server listen on port 3323, which is one of the common ports used, and have the cache refreshed every 60 minutes. This means the router will update its local validation table from the cache every 60 minutes. This is what's recommended in RFC 8210, but you can make it more frequent if you want, or less frequent if, that, if you prefer. An example on the screen shows the one-line configuration needed in Cisco IOS and IOS XE to configure the connection to the RPKI cache. Once the router's RPKI table is populated, the router indicates validation state in the BGP table. Cisco IOS does all this automatically for the operator. We then have various status commands. And the screen shows the various status commands that can be used. You can display the connection status to the RPKI servers. You can show the actual VRPs. The VRP is a validated raw payload. In other words, it's the ROAs that have been downloaded from the cache. And show IP BGP shows the BGP table, but now includes a status indication next to the prefix. You will recall the BGP table from earlier on in the series in the introduction to BGP. We now have one extra character column indicating the validation status. And if you want to pull these out, you can use the search command and iOS command line looking for the V that appears in the BGP table. For Juniper, the configuration is somewhat different. Cisco have tried to make it as easy as possible for the network operator. And we'll have a look at some of the issues that this causes a bit later on. Juniper also makes it relatively easy for the user, but nothing is automatic. The first thing we have to do, as shown on the slide, is to configure the connection to the validation cache. I have used the same parameters for the Juniper configuration shown as for the Cisco IOS example earlier. Once we have configured the connection to the validator, we need to configure validation policies. The screen shows how to set up the validation policies. I've called the policy statement RPKI validation. And then we look for the case where the prefix uh, validation is valid, or invalid, or unknown. Notice Juniper calls not found state unknown. First thing we have to do is check incoming on the BGP announcement if the prefix coming in is in the validation database. If it's in the validation database, we then mark the validation state as valid. This goes into the BGP table. So it compares with the validation database and puts the state in the BGP table. We do the same for invalid, and we do the same for unknown. This policy will be part of other incoming BGP policies on the eBGP session. Once we've done this, we then apply the policy to the eBGP session itself. And so the slide shows uh, step three, which is applying the inbound policy, RPKI validation, to this neighbor called ISP upstream. We check the validation state first before we then do the other policy called upstream in. And this will flag in the BGP table whether the prefix is valid invalid or not found. The Juno status commands are very similar to the Cisco IOS ones. To find out the details of the connection to the RPKI servers, we do show validation session detail. To show the VRPs, we do show validation replication database. To find out the BGP table, show route protocol BGP. If you recall, Cisco IOS simply indicates the V for valid, the I for invalid, and the N for not found. Juniper actually displays in the BGP table for the prefix itself the full word, valid, invalid, or unknown. And finally, show route protocol BGP validation state valid will show the status valid prefixes in the BGP table. 
I want to have a look at some of the implementation notes. You need to be a little bit careful with the vendor defaults. Juniper has followed the RFC quite closely and has left all the policy to the end user. The operator has to configure what policy they need to do. The connection to the RPKI cache, the validator, is configured, and that's all it does. It simply downloads the validation table. There is no automatic linkage of this validation table to the BGP table. But in Cisco IOS, Cisco automates as much of this as it can. In fact, the RFC recommends not doing this, but Cisco seems to do it in any case. Another thing to note is that prefix originated locally into IBGP automatically marked as valid. There's no check against the cached validation table. The idea is that the operator can originate non-signed address blocks or other entity address space inside their own IBGP for whatever reason they need to do this. 